click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, today we are going to discuss about a technique which is known as implicit threading and there are various alternatives known as thread pool, open MP and grand central dispatch to apply that implicit threading. With the invent of the multi-core programming that the growth is now from tens of threads to thousands of threads, the applications and designing of this multi-core programming, designing such task is not a trivial undertaking. The programmers must address not only the programming challenges but also additional difficulties. Now one way to address these difficulties and manage this execution of the traditional designing now, one way to address these difficulties and manages this designing of a multi-threaded programming is by transferring the creation and management threads from the application developers to the compilers and runtime libraries. Now, these runtime libraries can known as a implicit threading. This implicit threading is a popular trend today. By implicit threading, we can design and multi-threaded programming in a more convenient and reliable way. Now we will discuss about the alternative approaches by which we can implement this implicit threading. The first one is a thread pool. If we consider the web server in a multi-threaded environment, when a web server receives request for the servicing, then it can create a separate thread to service the request. Now, creating a thread is obviously more superior than creating a process, but creating a thread has nonetheless have potential problems. The overhead and time of creating a thread, along with the fact that the thread will be terminated and discarded after finishing its work, is a pure contention overhead. Now, another troublesome issue is that if there are many concurrent requests for the web server, then the many concurrent web server request handling is done by separate threads. Now the number of threads are unlimited and there is no bound. Now this unlimited concurrent thread can exhaust all the resources such as CPU time and memory. So one way to solve this problem is to creating a thread pool. What is the key idea behind a thread pool? It is that all the threads are created at the time of process startup and then they put into a thread pool where they sit and wait for the work. Now if the server receives a request for something to service, then it awakens a thread from this pool and then see that it is free or available or not. If the thread is available, then it allocates the request to the thread after receiving and sending servicing this request, the thread is again get back to the pool, awaits more work. Now the server wants to be waited if there are no available threads to be serviced. And it has to wait until an available thread is there to service the request. Now this thread pool has three main benefits. Number one is existing thread is faster than creating thread while requesting the services. The second is a thread pool can limit the number of thread that exist at any point of a system. All the threads that are servicing a request can get back to the pool after finishing their completion of work. And the third and main advantage is that separating a task from the creation of mechanism of the task is allows us different strategies to implement the task. For example, a task can be scheduled by a periodically or a time delay. Now the number of threads that are to be added to the pool can be set heuristically by the application process, depending on the factors of number of available CPUs, the amount of memory, and the concurrent client request acceptation. This expectation can give us the idea about how many concurrent requests can be there concurrently in a web server. This web server can then service within this number of thread pools. Now the their structure can be structured in a way that the dynamical allocation of these threads inside the thread pool can be managed. Then it provides additional benefits of getting a smaller pool that consuming a lesser memory. Such example of an architecture is a grand central dispatch which we will discuss later.
the Windows API provides a number of functions or utilities related to the thread pool. Now the pthread of creating a thread is very similar to the thread pool thread creation using the thread create function. Now we will see a function that is used to run as a separate thread in a thread pool. Here you can see we are defining a function named as pool function which is to be run as a separate thread inside the thread pool. Now the thread pool can provide different functions or utilities that can be invoked and a pointer to this pool function can be passed inside that function and the thread from the pool to be execute that function particularly. A particular instance or utility among the thread pool is the queue user work item function. This function has mainly three parameters. The first one is a LP thread start routine. Actually, it is a pointer to the function where the separate thread will begin its execution. The next thing is a P void param, which is the number of parameters to be passed in that function. And the third is a new long flag, which is to indicate that how to create and manage the thread's execution in that pool. So we will write it out that example of a new user work item call. Here this function QUSERWORKITEM is passed a pointer to the pool function where it will begin its execution and we are not specifying any parameter to the pool function that is why your flag is set to zero and no other parameter special one are passed to this QUSERWORKITEM in this example. Other members in the Windows API thread pool or utilities can be invoked periodically or any asynchronous signal is handled at that time. In Java, java.util.concurrent package includes all the thread pool utilities as well. The next one is OpenMP. OpenMP is a compiler directive as well as an API for the program that is written in C, C++, Fortran that provides support for the programming parallel languages for any other supportants. It identifies parallel regions as blocks or parallel blocks that can run an execution in parallel. Applications include the directives inside these parallel blocks at their code and the compiler directives and instruct the OpenMP runtime library to available threads from the pool to run its execution. Now in this way, the thread pool on the threads can run execution using an OpenMP. Now we will see a compiler directory for an OpenMP that will help with the printf statement. First, we are including this omp.h header file to make the compiler directive of OpenMP available to the C program along with this stdio.h header file. So here inside the main function, we are actually adding a compiler directive or OpenMP directive that's name is parallel. Inside the parallel, there is a printf statement which is happened in the sequential code of this OpenMP directive. Now, when the OpenMP runtime library will execute this directive, it will create as many threads as there are processor in the system. If the processor is dual core, then it will create two threads and if it is a quad core, then it will create four threads and so forth. Now all the threads that is created will then execute in parallel. Now the OpenMP directives will then call the runtime library to execute the threads. Now along with the parallelism, OpenMP also provides support for parallelizing loops. 
Now, for example, if there are two arrays known as A and B of size n, and we want to make the sum of the contents of this array and put it in another array of array C. Now, we can do it with dividing the task in separate region or parallel blocks, which can concurrently run in several concurrent threads. Now, we will see that how to define that parallel for block. So here we are creating a for WebNMP compiler directive which will do the function of adding the two contents of array and putting it into the another array of C. Now here it will divide the task into the parallel blocks which will then execute concurrently. Now apart from the giving support from parallelizing loops, it also support or allow the developers to choose among different levels of parallelization. For example, it can manually set the number of threads that are to be heuristically added to the thread pool. It also allow the developers to set manually that the sharing among the threads can be done or the thread will have its private data. Now this way, as OpenMP is an open source and commercial applications of Linux, Windows, Mac OS X and Solaris, it can be applied easily and reliably. The next one is a Grand Central Dispatch. The Grand Central Dispatch is a combination of an extension of a C language, an API, and also a runtime library, along with to provide the application developers to divide the task in a code section or blocks that can run in parallel. Like OpenMP, it mainly deals with the many details of thread creation and management. GCD identifies these blocks by extension of a C or C++ language by generally giving them a caret sign in front of a braces. Inside of that, it is the statement that is in written in C or C++. We will see that how to write it. Here we are creating a printf statement that is an extension of a C or C++ language and can be written in the GCD by like this. Now while creating a GCD block then it can put it in a dispatch queue. After the block is dispatched from the dispatch queue and removed from it then it is allocated to any thread available on the thread pool that it manages by the GCD. Now there are mainly two types of dispatch queue that is maintained by the GCD. One is serial, another there is concurrent. In a serial dispatch queue, the blocks are removed in a FIFO fashion. Once a block is removed, then it must complete its execution before another block can be removed from that dispatch queue. Now all processes has its own serial queue. If the developer wants to add additional serial queues that are local to any process, he can do that. Now, the serial dispatch queue can ensure that the sequential execution of a task. The number two dispatch queue is the concurrent dispatch queue. In this type of dispatch queue, also the blocks are removed in a FIFO fashion, but the difference is that any number of blocks can be removed concurrently and thus they can execute in parallel. Now there are three system-wide dispatch queue concurrent in present in the pthread and windows api library. In grand central dispatch which is supported by an apple mac ios x and ios android system, there can be low, default and high priority dispatch queue. These priorities are nothing among the relative importance among the blocks. Obviously, the higher important block will be placed in a high priority queue to finish its execution. Now we will write a block that will accept a default priority concurrent dispatch queue and place a block inside that queue using a dispatch async function.
First, we are creating and obtaining a default priority dispatch queue by giving this sentence. Now we will place a block inside that queue using this dispatch async function. Now we are visiting and placing this block of printf inside that queue using the dispatch async function. Now inside the GCD, all threads are managed as a P thread in POSIX and also GCD actively manages the thread pool that it allows to grow and shrink the number of threads in the thread pool according to the application demand and system security. That is all for implicit threading. Thank you for watching this video. Stay tuned with Ikira and subscribe to Ikira.